What's up guys and gals and it's that time for the next episode in our Dawn of War 2 vanilla playthrough. In the last episode we had found that the Eldar were manipulating the orcs for unknown reasons and so now we've got to go and investigate on planet Typhon. Before we do that I'm going to grab my units and kind of get them leveled up though. I always like to spend pre-mission time checking out my unit. Here we go. So we've got the pistol of ball. Oh we can actually equip them with the same gear that the force commander uses interestingly enough. Okay, well they're not leveled up nearly enough anyways, so I'm not really going to focus on them. In fact, we're probably not going to use them too much. I, I, don't, I just don't know. In my past experience, I haven't been a big fan of the assault troops. However, we've got Avatus who's all leveled up. And his next thing we want to focus on, quite possibly maybe giving him a tad more HP, just to make him a little bit more resilient. The other thing that might be interesting to work towards is a better loadout. I'm trying not to look at playthroughs online. I know in the last couple episodes I had mentioned once or twice that I might do some research. I've decided against it, and I, that's more in the interest of keeping this as kind of a blind playthrough. I have played most of the campaign years ago when the game first came out, but beyond that... I don't really remember builds or anything of that nature, so I'm just kind of going off like what their default weapon is and being like, well, I'm assuming more range damage would be pretty sweet. But I think I might want to bring him up to the increased... The sprint might be nice for moving him around, so I'm thinking I'm going to get their HP at least up to sprint so that I can move around and deploy him a little bit quicker when I need to. Other weapons that he can have equipped, none available really. And so in between here and the last mission, there's not going to be a whole lot of customization to be done. Just in case they force me to use Thaddeus... I think I'll increase his melee a little bit. That's going to give him a Merciless Strike. It's kind of a little slashy, think like cross slash, almost like a, a wave attack type deal. It's a little bit of an AoE, I think, if I remember correctly. And then I might give him a bit more HP because he is, after all, a melee unit. Let's back off of there and let's consider going over to... Receiving reports that the Eldar are stirring up the orcs on the nearby Typhon system. Like Calderas, Typhon is a recruiting world for our chapter. We cannot allow it to fall. The Armageddon will take you to Typhon, so you can engage the enemy there. I will remain here on Calderas to coordinate defensive operations. I will relay all distress signals we receive from Typhon back to you. All right, sounds pretty sweet. I always like being kept in the loop. Let's go to Typhon Primaris. The Armageddon's navigation display. From here, you can review data on the planets of the... I know what it is. I don't think you guys need an explanation of what the galaxy map looks like. There's us jumping through a super awesome warp gate. I wonder what that feels like if you're inside the ship. That's got to be kind of weird. Do you tingle? I don't know. Let's look at our deployments here. So we've got two targets here on Typhon. The first is to defend an array. The defense missions are pretty cool. I might try one of those out just to show them off. Or, what is this right here? It looks like that's some kind of assault, and it's got an armored f or an automated foundry. That's an interesting choice. I may actually go for the foundry if we can. The foundry is pretty useful. It allows us to deploy multiple times in a day if we can stack enough of them. That's probably going to be our deployment, so let's go for the foundry and see what we can get done here. Commander, we have located a substantial Eldar strike force. This force appears to be led by one of their so-called warp spiders. Warp spiders are capable of rapid teleportation which may explain how the Eldar are monitoring the orcs on Typhon without being seen. Eliminate him, and uncover what you can of the Eldar plans on Typhon. Alright, well we're going to have to handle our deployment first if I remember correctly. Yeah, I definitely don't want to deploy with just two squads. Let's see here. We've got Avatus. Let's put him in. We're going to put him in the standard spot so that I'm not messing up my hot keybinds the entire time. And we're not going to bring Thaddeus. I think I'm going to stick with this squad for the majority of the game. Later on, if I remember correctly, we get one or two more units. I don't really remember, though, so we'll see what happens there. Let's go ahead and deploy. The reward for this mission is a flash grenade. I haven't played around with that at all. My assumption is it probably just AoE stuns everything, causes a bunch of problems for the enemy. The Eldar are going to pose an interesting problem here. They are one of the more dangerous enemies that you end up facing as the Space Marines because they are pretty smart and they've got decent technology which isn't something that the Space Marines are used to coming up against. Typically the enemies tend to have like enormous numbers and that's how they kind of rectify the gap in tactics and things of that nature. And down we go. That's got to be a hell of an impact. I got in a car crash. Our scanners place the warp spider in the position marked on your map. He will not stay there for long. 
We should move. Agreed. But watch for traps. All right, I think I'm going to head this direction first. I don't really know what kind of defilator cover we're going to have as we move out. But I do see a CP right there. And this place looks like it has a little bit better cover than everything else. Let's get everybody into position here. Have him wipe out the Eldar as best he can with a little bit of his melee skillage. And they are just going to get skilled on here if we can help it. And it looks like he's already handled them before anybody else could deploy, so that's good. Got a few more Eldar up here and a few more over here. Oh, they warped in behind us. I didn't even notice that one. That could be a bit of a problem. Are they warping from here? I'm checking to see if all of those units are vanishing or if they're still there. Alright, well, let's send the Force Commander up to there. I'm happy with Tarkus's deployment if we can get him in right there. Maybe think about putting Avatus in right here to watch that flank. Yikes. Alright, well, they've got a melee unit here. I'm going to try and knock them back as best I can. Hopefully not drawing the rest of my squad into melee combat. Our Force Commander is taking a little bit of damage, so I'm going to try and get him into cover as quickly as possible. This group over here is being held down fairly well. There's some basic power armor being dropped. Let's see if we can pull... We're going to have to advance, I think, because the Force Commander is taking some fire. Let's have them focus on him right there, clear out this cover if we can. And then they're going to advance. Force Commander is going to fall back. Let's move him on up. Let's get Cyrus into position as well. I've been, get, I've been forgetting about him as we go through. Awful. All right, so our tackies are caught up in melee. Luckily, our Force Commander has had enough time to get himself all healed up, and they're suppressed, so we should just butcher them to the man right here. This should just be a bloodbath for them. I'm going to grab that power armor, so at the bare minimum, it's not going to be that useful because it is just a generic white item, but we can sacrifice it for a little bit of XP down the line. Maybe consider moving the Devastator squad up. Now that they've got him cleaned out, we'll move the tax up to there. There we go. And he should be able to bust them up reasonably well with his charge. Get rid of some of that cover, make it a little bit more difficult. It looks like they've got it flushed pretty well, though. And since they're going to flush it, let's just treat it like there's a turd in there. And down it goes. Blow him on out of the window. We don't have our scouts in position just yet, but we'll probably be okay. Let's get the TAC Marines in there. Maybe think about... Actually, do they have any buildings over here that are covered? Let's keep the tax back real quick. Let's bring up the scout squad who should be in the back. Let's get Cyrus on up and in here. I don't know if they're going to be able to see through our stealth. One would assume that they might be able to. Let's get the tactical marines into position. What are you guys doing? Hold on here. Got the wrong unit selected, as always. Let's throw a timer charge, or a satchel charge, in here while they're kind of drawing fire. And then we'll draw them back really quickly. They are suppressed, but these guys should be able to provide, or provide some kind of cover. Kind of lost my words there for a moment. I think they're going to outshoot these guys right here, so nothing to worry about there. Let's move forward to try and take this position. Maybe putting people into position as best we can. Eh, never mind. They've actually got us flanked fairly well. I don't want to risk trying to take that CP right now, if we can help it at all. Oh, there's a bunch over there, too. Ah, they seem to have triggered some friends here and ended up getting sniped. Well, that's a fun occurrence. I didn't expect for these guys to go around this way. I thought they would come around here. It looks like they've taken that position. You'll forgive me. My spotty internet there. Deciding to be a dick and make all kinds of noise. Let's see. Well, what do I want to do now? Force Commander, where are you at? Force Commander, get in there with those snipers. And let's see if you can cause a little bit of mayhem. The weather over here is not so nice. And it's making me feel a little bit extended. Did they snipe him already? They did. They tried to anyways. Let's put them up and in that building. We're going to put our scouts over there, and then let's have our attack marines kind of move up this way. They probably have that building taken. Getting them into position should give us a superior firing position for the remainder of this engagement right here. Let's take the initiative to there. There we go. So we've already taken that. Let's get them out of the way of that grenade. 
and then get them back into position if we can. Okay, now that they're out of the way, I'm gonna have to make a cut right here because this game functions on crappy ass games from Windows Live. So let me check real fast to make sure that it didn't disconnect me from games from Windows Live and isn't saving right now. Alright, everything's looking okay here, so let's jump back into combat. I really hate games that are linked to games for Windows Live. It drives me nuts. And there's really no need for it too. That's one of my big rants about gaming, is like how much DL or I'm sorry, how much DRM can you stack on one game? Like, you're already forced to play this game through Steam. And then on top of that, they hit you with DRM in the form of games for Windows Live, too. It's just like, wow, really? It's the kind of thing that only punishes people that actually bought the game. It doesn't do anything to the people that didn't buy it anyways. I actually need you guys out of this building right now. Get in on this combat. He's suppressed. I don't see any good cover here. It's just a bunch of bushes and things. Let's maybe sit them right there. Let's get Cyrus up in here, maybe. I don't see a whole lot of equitable resources to work with. This position kind of sucks. Oh, and that sniper is still going to keep hectoring me. That's fun. And I have no way to fire back because Cyrus hasn't leveled up enough yet to actually be able to return fire with his sniper rifle, which is how I would handle this. They've only got one left in that ranger squad. Let's take what shots we can. Oh, God. All right, so they've drawn us out in true deceitful, cowardly Eldar fashion. Let's get them into position. They're out of range, too. That's even better. Let's send the Force Commander after him, hopefully. We should be able to kill off a couple of them at the bare minimum. I'm going to call in an artillery strike on that location, and we're just going to see if we can blast them out of there. Now, the artillery strike is no guarantee to actually kill whoever's in this building. That is one thing that I would like to mention, that it's not a guarantee. Yeah, that was kind of a waste. Let's have the scouts move in. We'll demolition charge it. You can drop artillery on buildings, but you can't guarantee that the artillery strike's actually going to kill anybody. Oh, they've got snipers in there, too. Well then, run, amigos. That's your only choice. We'll grab the flamer for now. That building is currently cleared on out, and so we have a couple options. We can go down this way, clear them out, grab the foundry, which I think is why we took this mission in the first place. So I think that's what I'm going to do. Let's get Tarkus and everybody else in a position that we can. I don't like fighting with Eldar. They tend to have those little kind of bait and switch tactics that you just noticed right there. Let me see if I can run them out. I'm going to take the initiative with my melee as best as possible. The Armor of Vandia. That should be fairly useful in the future. I didn't look at the stats, but it's got a cool name. Scouts are about to get blown up, but they managed to dodge it somehow. Even with my terrible spinning perspective on this entire engagement, I managed to get them out of the way on time. We haven't lost any Brother Marines just yet. However, I think I would like for him to be in cover until we manage to handle them. Oh, and they've teleported into our midst. That is just awful. These warp spiders are really, really a pain. And we're still taking fire from across the stream, so instead, let's kind of see if we can bait and switch them for now. I don't think we should have any problem with that tactic. That's going to pull our force commander out. You can see he's regenerating just a tiny little bit. Make him a bit more useful in the future. That one's going to retreat, but he's just not going to make it. Force Commander, being our tank, is absolutely going to go first. Let's see who we can get into position here. We've got our scouts over here, our tackies right here, and our devastators here. Everybody's got cover. Ew, and they're flanked. All right, let's draw them back. We need them to run away. That is simply not going to work. You gents, suppress. There we go. Lock them down, and then what we'll do is we'll have him charge into the melee here. Kind of disrupt their firing pattern, maybe destroy their cover. Run back, get into this Guardian squad, kind of fighting, but I think Tarkus could hold it down here if I really needed him to. They're holding a building right there that we're going to have to clear out. I apologize if the action is not so clear. This rain is actually kind of disturbing my visual line of sight as well. It also could be that I have a giant pop filter in front of my mic blocking my view. Could be one or the other. It could be the giant pantyhose made thing that's just sitting in the middle. Or it could be the rain. I'm going to blame it on the rain because it's simpler. Move them up to the bushes so at least they're firing at somebody. But Force Commander is going to have to fall back here. Let's get him into some light cover. Maybe give him a moment or two to regenerate. 
he's running away into us. I don't really know what the point of that was. Maybe it was like a man in the iron mask type charge. Give the force commander just a moment to get some HP back. Let's take Cyrus and his boys, and we're actually going to have him move forward and flush out this building once again. I absolutely love the demolition charges. They work great for this sort of thing. Oh, they have two buildings. All right, well, let's one by one flush them out. So there's charge number one. Have them fall back because they're not suppressed. There it is. We'll try and get them into position to throw this other one, although they're a little low on energy. I don't know if they're going to make it. Maybe we'll stop them right here. There we go. They should be able to make that throw. There it is. Oh, and they took a sniper round. Let's have them retreat on out. And that's going to be the point at which I think squad commander should probably run in and cause problems. Let's get Avatus in. Tactical Marines are going to be headed out this way into medium moderate cover. That should keep them pretty much, well, engaged to the adequate level that I would hope. Devastators, this is why I wish they had sprint, so they could run through engagements like this and take their position. Squad commander's doing okay over here, clearing these guys out. Tactical Marines are butchering the last few on that side. Let's have them get knee-deep in the bush there. I don't think they'll complain. We've got a few more units that need to be dealt with. Let me move the Tactical Marines over to this rock. They'll deal with these guys as best they can while we wait for our squad commander to capture that automated foundry. I don't really like this position right here because they've got good cover. We've got terrible cover. They've got medium. We've got light cover. But we should be able to just kind of blaze them out of there, I guess. Hopefully they don't shift their fire. Yeah, you can watch their HP drop pretty substantially. We do have some supplies left that we can loot, so let me grab a few of these supply crates. I'm going to have everybody else move forward without the cover of our melee units. Whether or not that's a good decision remains to be seen. Always with this game, you always want to hold the initiative if you can. These gents are going to... Ah, rubber band boxing has completely and totally sabotaged me. Saboteur! And as soon as this engagement is done, the fact that they've got cloaking makes it difficult to deploy without having to be variable or at least a little bit adaptive. How he's still got medium cover, I couldn't tell you, but let's move them forward. Maybe put the tackies right there. We'll have the scouts go first, maybe. Or maybe not. Looks like they've got a fairly nice set of melee units that are going to charge us, unfortunately. Let me get the tackies up and out of here. We'll stick these guys on suppressive fire. And yeah, we've got to get Force Commander in here. It figures right when I say there's probably not going to be any contention for this position. A bunch of melees rush me. Either way, Avatus tends to provide pretty good cover for that sort of thing. You should be able to retreat if you've got yourself positioned appropriately. Let's have Avatus move up. Force Commander is going to be there. We'll position on both sides. Water, I believe. I don't remember very well, but I think water does something negative to your cover. I couldn't quote me on it, though. Or I couldn't quote you any specific rulebook passage on it. We're going to bomb out this building where they've got a couple of sharpshooters in there, or at least a couple of guys with good cover. Down it goes, and then we should be good for our advance. I don't think they're in that building. That one isn't flagged as red for me. I may abandon the second tier. Er, let's get them out of stealth really quickly. Have Tarkus move up and then have him charge. Although I think his charge just destroyed the cover that they were once holding. So unfortunately we may get into trouble there. Avatus wouldn't be a bad idea to get him kind of up into this way. And I always apologize for this game. If it seems like I'm moving very, very quickly, it's because the game is by its nature fast-paced. If you aren't adapting, you aren't moving around, keeping things slightly fluid, this game tends to sort of snowball on you. All right, so everybody's wiped out here. Let's capture this other CP. Let me take my scouts, move on ahead. And since we've actually already taken a position, I'm not going to worry about this CP over here. That's going to cost us a bunch of time that I just really don't feel like spending in terms of the episode. 
Ooh, warp spiders. Let's get... They are absolutely 100% weak to melee. So let's get them out as quickly as possible. Force commander should be able to help. There we go. Knock them down and shoot them while they're on the ground. Typically, I wouldn't condone doing somebody on the deck, but... When it comes to the Eldar, they are deceitful. So we fight dishonorably as well. be careful about this engagement. It looks like it's in the middle of a giant arena of some sort. I have no idea what's about to happen right here. I vaguely remember the earlier orc fights. When it comes to the Eldar, though, I remember their boss fights being a little bit worse, or at least a little bit more difficult, requiring a bit more acuity, which as you guys know, I don't tend to be very good at channeling. Let me get my tackies up in here. I think they're just hanging back for now. What I would like to do, let's get everybody right here so that we kind of flow into here like water. Everybody's full up on their support items except for demolition charges. I don't think we're going to need them for the boss, though. Let's send Force Commander in. And everybody else is going to flow in just the same. Nice, similarly, I prefer for everybody to breach, kind of come in at the same time. The second we hit the center here, I can almost guarantee you we're going to get attacked. And for that reason, there he is. Let's there jump into is. combat as quickly as possible. Is he smiling? Here you come, my good little prey. Now you just do me the further kindness of dying. Don't think I'm gonna give you a 10-4 on that, good buddy. Definitely no dying going on here. Oh, he threw a grenade right there. Oh, it's like a floaty grenade thing. See if maybe I can get him out from our midst to keep our commander moving in here. Some kind of anti gravity bomb. I don't know what it's called. I don't use Eldar. And we almost lost a squad right there, unfortunately. They don't seem to be affected by their own grenades. We haven't lost anybody yet, though, which is always good. Let me see if maybe I can draw these guys out of the direct fire. Damn. Alright, well we lost somebody. He is focusing fire and switching targets quite frequently. Which is making this entire thing very, very difficult to deal with. If I had a better plan, I would use it, but... Unfortunately... Force Commander is not even trying anymore. He's given up. Let's charge him over to here. Oh, and he's immune to knockdown. That's funsies. We've lost one of our Devastator Marines. Let's get him into cover. That's probably the issue here, is I'm just kind of standing out in the middle of nowhere. Let me get everybody shifted. And now that everybody's in cover, we should take a bit less damage. I wasn't thinking there for a moment. I actually don't think this guy needs to be tanked. In fact, it might be a bad idea. See if he can get in there and cause some problems for them. Ooh, nastiness. I don't know if they've got two of them right now or what's going on here, but we are out of medkits. I think they've got two separate groups. Let's get Cyrus the hell on out of here. Because it looks like he's about to go down. Maybe throw a grenade at him. He seems to be focusing pretty heavily. There we go. Ah, that got messy. Alright, well, Cyrus took a little bit of a beating there. I kind of forgot about him over in the cover, but it's alright. He'll be fine. Cyrus is tough. He used to be like a thousand different anime characters, so he'll be fine. We got the blind grenade pack, which we can now equip as an accessory. I'm probably not going to use it. I think it just does a stun, like a major stun, but given the utility of regular grenades, I'll probably stick with normal fragmentations. All of our squads stayed up, luckily. Speed was a little slow, but we did get a foundry, which is going to help us out in the future. As soon as we jump this line right here, we get a second deployment, which means we can make better headway 
into the game's campaign. Let's do our storyline here. Any level ups to look at? No, actually. It's taken a while to get through level four, unfortunately. And almost everything here is taking a level five. Oh, we got the Curious of Azariah. Ooh, that's actually pretty good for a melee character, so I'll probably give that to the Force Commander. Let's do some storyline here as soon as we get out of these beautiful loading screens. Work, Commander. Without warp spiders stirring up the orcs, Typhon is far more secure. It still remains unclear what the Eldar hope to gain by provoking the orcs. Whatever their purpose, the Eldar are using all their trickery to disrupt communications outside the sector. We are uncertain how they are managing this, but our astropaths describe their interference as a shadow across the warp. A shadow across the warp? Those were their exact words? Yes, those were their exact words, Cyrus. We have more immediate problems, however. Mech Badzappa is mounting another offensive on the capital, and I need to see to our defenses. Secure Typhon quickly. I could use you back here soon. Thule out. Why so concerned with the ravings of Astropath, Cyrus? No reason. I just hope that casting a shadow across the warp is an ability the Eldar truly have, for all our sakes. Alright, so that was day number six. My name is Splattercat, thank you for joining me here at the Nerd Castle. I am tremendously honored to have you guys all here, and I will see you in our next episode. Take care, everybody, and I will see you for day seven.